This is a Lamley Showcase, actually more of a preview for you ticket holders for the Hot Wheels 34th Annual Collector Convention, which was to be held this week in Los Angeles, but it's 2020, so it's not. But in a way, the show can still go on. Thanks to Mark and Jennifer Milholland, who run this convention. We're still able to get the models out to those that bought tickets for this convention. And that we're still able to raise some money for charities. It's been really cool, considering how crazy this year has been, that between the Charlotte event that was going to happen in April and this Los Angeles event that was going to happen in October, that while it's still not the gathering we hoped it was, all the events we love to attend, the previews we like to see, that we can still have something happen. And that those that bought tickets are going to get their models that Mattel's created other models that are made by the newsletter and um, other charities and so on and so forth. But while it's a bummer that we can't be there, we can still see the models. And Mark and Jennifer have sent the four convention models to me to show for you. You've already seen them, hopefully, but we're going to open them up, check them all out, and this will be really, really cool. I want to explain something because I, I get a lot of questions about the convention models. For example, like this, there's two sales models. This one is one of them. It is the 93 Nissan D21 hard body custom pickup. We're going to open that up. I cannot wait to do it. It's a newcomer to the convention models. I think it's worth explaining how these models are done. These are Mattel releases. So for example, if you're a collector of this hard body casting and you want everyone released, this is an official Mattel release, the convention Nissan hard body. Or for example, the other sales model, the 41 Willis Gasser. You want you want this one, you like the RLC, you want uh, all of these releases, then you're going to want this Bloodshot model, which will open up as well, um, done by, you know, Brendan Vitesky who designed it, Steve Vanderbilt who did the graphics here, and then Julian Coyles who did the card art. But some people might ask, why would Mattel do this one or that one? Now, this is probably not the perfect example, but I want to explain kind of how this works. These models are done by Mattel, created by Mattel, and essentially designed by Mattel, the graphics and things, but these models are actually commissioned by Mark and Jennifer. Sometimes I'll get a question like, why would Mattel do, say, a 55 gasser for this convention? It's because Mark and Jennifer ask them to do it. Mark and Jennifer try and figure out um, what models they think the attendees at the convention would be happiest to get, and a lot of times they'll say, you know, they love the 510 wagon, they love the 510 coupe, they love the 55 Bel Air Gasser, why would we stop giving it to them? And they're always right, because they sell like crazy. So that question always comes up, why are these models done? Because Mark and Jennifer asked them to do it, and then Mattel will take over, do the designs, even they'll, they'll, con they'll confer with Mark and Jennifer on the designs, and I think they're approved, because Mark and Jennifer actually pay for these convention models to be done, and then they sell them there at the event to the convention attendees. So there's always two sales models. The convention attendees can come in and buy, I think, up to three, depending on the ticket you have. Then there's the finale Saturday night. Mattel usually does the preview. I like to film from there of some upcoming stuff, and that model is actually given to a ticket holder. They don't even have to buy it. That is the third convention model. In this case, it is the Volkswagen T1 panel bus which I think a lot of people are excited to see. Again, commissioned by Mark and Jennifer for those who have that question. And then Mattel went ahead and designed it. Again, to probably their specifications. Those are the three convention models. Then there's always a fourth model, which is the dinner giveaway model. Usually Mark and Jennifer and the team over at the convention will pick a Hot Wheels designer or someone affiliated with the brand to honor. And in this case, for the LA convention, that Thursday night dinner honoree was going to be Steve Vandervate, who actually does the graphics for these and for all of Hot Wheels Premium. And because we couldn't do it, actually, we were able to chat with him on my IGTV, my Instagram TV, and have a really cool live chat where he talked about all of his designs and his history, his career, and even previewed some stuff for us. He also previewed the model that he created for that dinner that was going to be given to the attendees at the dinner. And it is, in fact, the 55 Chevy Bel Air Gasser. He chose this casting. He wanted to do it. And he did this creative, super cool Delft Influence Deco on the Gasser. We were joking, like, if you dropped it, would it break? Or, you know, like, it looks good in Grandma's house. Um, Dutch Courage is the theme. We'll talk about that. It's very, very cool. And that was the model that he designed for the dinner. 
those are your four convention models commissioned by Mark and Jennifer and Steve and then done sold to convention attendees and ticket holders. That hopefully gives you an explanation. There's always a fifth, but it's gonna be a little different this year. Mattel actually does their own model, not at the request of Mark and Jennifer, but they do, they do their own um, in support of the event and they will sell at the convention for, to RLC members who are attending the convention. That is always the pink model. And they did one for this convention as well, but because the convention itself was canceled, they went ahead and moved this one to become an RLC exclusive. It'll be sold on the RLC site. But I thought considering this would have typically in a normal circumstance be sold at the event with extras sold on RLC, that I would lump this in. Mattel actually sent this model to me. Mark and Jennifer sent me these. Mattel sent me this one. So we're gonna do all five of them today as part of our showcase. Hopefully that's a good introduction. Let's move through these models very, very quickly and uh, open them up. We will start with number one. One of the newcomers to the convention. Let's get rid of these. Protectors. Here is the card art so you can look at it. I think you've already seen it kind of a cool low rider theme because it is LA 93 Nissan D21 hard body custom pickup there is the model we're going to open up there's the details on the convention down below here's the back I'll show you the number here in a second you can see some of the designs Mark Jones did the casting um, Steve Vandervate the custom decos and then the packaging by Julian Coils I think that'll be a long um, we'll look at the back on all of these you can obviously freeze it if you want to read it how many were made of this sales model? 6,700. This is number 256, which this is the one they sent me, so it's the one I'm going to open, even though it's a low number. Anything else to look at? Well, before we open it up, this is only the second version of the hard body because the first one was in car culture. I love that they picked this one to do kind of a little bit like uh, kind of out of left field, I think. I like those out of left field choices for a convention model, not the gas or not the 510. I'm always fine with those too. But a very, very cool choice to be doing this one. This one was done in that uh, kind of, what was that, 80s theme, early 90s theme. Um, kind of an homage to um, to the uh, older design. I can't remember what the casting was. But uh, they did this one. Super, super slam. Mark Jones designed it, even to the point that it like barely rolls uh, when you showcase it or when you roll it. Um, you can hear it scraping. I know that you don't see it, but you can hear it scraping on the uh, wood when I do it that way. So I'm curious because these wheels, these are the new five spoke rims are a little bit bigger. I'm going to see how this one rolls. So let's open it up. This cardboard is a lot thicker than you're used to on most Hot Wheels models. They have the, even they add the back portion of it. Don't need it. And here is the model and it looks fantastic love it in this kind of pearl white color um, very appropriate graphics on this one very nissan you know hard body you've got the convention um they've kind of done the convention details in a kind of a cool i guess this is steve's doing um ceo d21 number 34 that 34 is the number of the convention um i will break away so you can see the back the bed of this what they've done here which is really cool detailing. I mean, you can see there's just details everywhere doing the boosters there in the back. You guys have to tell me what you think. I love this one. I like the car culture one, but this one just totally trumps it. And I'm very curious because the wheels are slightly bigger how it rolls. Well, here, oh, smooth. But the test will be, let's move it back here. Ah, uh, see, a little bit of a scrape, which is still kind of cool no screen so yes this one is awesome still has comes with that open window on one side closed window on the other which I think is kind of a cool detail but that is a very very cool truck uh, the Nissan hard body number two the other newcomer 41 Willis Gasser see you later protector looking very very cool let's look at the back brendan vitusky did design this one for rlc now it's moved on to the convention there's going to be another rlc i'm assuming 6700 produced like the hard body and that is correct this is number 239 another low number yikes well we're gonna open it up anyway 
let's have a look. Now, I said this is the only newcomer. This is the only version released so far in the RLC in this amazing orange color. I think a lot of you really liked it. Moon Eyes Deco, or like the Moon Eyes logo there on the front fender. It had the details, it has the opening hood. You can see all the details in the engine, which is just super, super cool. Like the, uh, the colored headers there, like the heat. That happens again here. You can see it's there. Let's open it up. Ah, oh, it's fun to open these models. Really, really dig this one. I know they're working on one for the selections, right? Oh, look at that. We'll start it with the uh, hood open to start so you can see the engine and the headers and all the detailing in there. Looks like there's some more detailing in the engine too that just. Yeah, there's like some red detailing. I don't know if that comes through over the camera, but love the real riders on this one. As this one swings around and you look at the back, you'll notice some names. Mark and Jennifer, when they can, like to give a little shout out to those that work tirelessly on the convention. And I, when I say tirelessly, I truly, truly mean it. You learn more you, when you go to these conventions, you realize how incredible it is, the work that folks put in um, to uh, to get these done, to get this convention running smoothly. And that even goes now as they're packaging up all these models to send out. The, vo the volunteers are there working as well. So it's really, really cool that they get a shout out there on the back of the car. Really nice um, color on this one. Bloodshot, it is a blood red. Um, you can see the pinstriping, hopefully you can, on the hood. And I don't know if it comes through, so I'll just show you here under the light. Check out the interior. Let's see if I can somehow get it to... It's really hard to kind of show it. But you've got a red steering wheel, you have a red roll bar, and some detailing, I think, even on the seats. Really, really hard to show, but it is there, and that looks amazing. What a beautiful casting. I really like the orange of the first one, but I don't know. This blood, now that it's been opened, really, really nice. Let's get to the finale model. This would have normally been the surprise model. Like they, they always like to unveil the sales models before the convention, but this one would have been, see ya. Um, this one would have been uh, unveiled at the finale. I think there was a, I think this might have leaked. And anybody who, you know, I've talked to T-Hunted about this, um, models get leaked. But when you leak something that someone spends their money on to be released, this isn't, you know, Mattel does this, but it was Mark and Jennifer pay for it super super uncool so if you ever get some stolen images of this and you feel inclined to share it don't it's way way uncool to share that because this is the cool unveiling at the finale but didn't happen right this year so there's just my little soapbox leaks or leaks but try to avoid the convention leaks is what i would say and if you see someone who says they have it don't look just say no i don't want to see it all right, Hot Wheels convention. Now, I know that other models, I can't remember which ones. I think the T1 has been a convention model before, and I know models have actually had this really cool flamed kind of retro Hot Wheels convention logo on it. So you Volkswagen fans are going to dig this convention model. Fans, retro Hot Wheels kind of Mattel collectors are going to dig this one as well. Um, there's a lot, lot to like on this one. This van is finally getting its due. It just it's finally kind of escaped from pop culture. And look how nice that looks in that two-tone retro uh, look. I think that is a winner for sure. All right. I'm so excited about this model. Have we seen a lot of convention gassers? I thought about getting out of the, the previous convention gassers, but we've done it a hundred times. There's the, there was the Pittsburgh in red, then the 250th anniversaries. One was the finale model. Um, in gold and the other was finale model in black that year uh, was it 2018 and then we saw it in Charlotte right in white but this one was done by Steve Vandervey he wanted to do the gasser in this Delft pottery deco as part of an homage to his heritage he said that this kind of pottery is all over this kind of um, this kind of this uh, the dishes right I mean you've seen them you've seen them in a lot of houses this uh, this Dutch style uh, pottery and I just think look at the card art which is so pretty look at the model like I said would it break if you dropped it I don't know. kind of funny um, it's a really really cool take 
and a very creative take by Steve. He wanted to do something different, and he definitely did. So I'm way into this one. And uh, like I said, if someone's saying, why are they doing another gasser? Well, you got to think of the circumstances. This is Steve. He wanted to do it. He could have done, I don't know, he could have done any model. He could have done the whatever. The I can't think of any generic right now, but the Fangster if he wanted to. Right? But he wanted to do the gasser. thought it was a great option for, uh, oh, I didn't show you the back. There's that, all of the details, and the number, how many were made, 55, huh, inappropriate, 5,500 made, and this is number 2750, so very cool. There's your gasser, and it is just pretty. All right, you get a sense of the interior. It's kind of a light blue, kind of sky blue color, which matches really nicely. Dutch Courage is the name. He explained what Dutch Courage is, if you don't know. It's um, basically what a few drinks will do to you. Give you a little Dutch Courage. Um, maybe a little bit of, maybe it's a little bit angry, a little bit, maybe just some uh, gumption. Maybe gives you a little extra gumption for whatever you want to accomplish, whether it's rational or not. Does that make sense? So that's Dutch Courage. So, you know, it's not something you would probably see in a, on a car culture model uh, in the store, but you can on a convention model. So this is why this is a really special model. Uh, a couple of things I'll show you after it's rounded around a couple of times. You can see convention details on the back. You can see that the styling, um, see if anyone gets that reference on the back license plate, by the way, you too. Um, this is the newer casting, and I want to show you the detailing in the engine that doesn't come across. You can see the blue in the headers there. See how cool that is? They really go all out in some of the details on these models, and uh, this one is no exception. Gasser fans, of which I am one, that is a winner. For sure, last model. Like I said, not for the convention model, or convention collectors, or the convention attendees this time. It will be RLC exclusive. But again, I think it's appropriate to show here. I'm assuming this is going on sale very soon because Mattel sent this to me from their distribution center. It is the 70 Boss Mustang Boss 302. A casting that is a favorite of mine. I've said everything's your favorite, right, John? Yes, it is true. But this Mustang is legitimately my favorite Mustang casting since it was done for vintage racing, right, several years ago. And it's been a very cool casting sense. I think June and I designed it. And this is actually the second time, even though it's not officially a convention car this time, this is the second time it was made for convention purposes. The first time, check this one out. This was done for the Kentucky, Lexington, Kentucky event, uh, 15th convention or nationals convention. What year would that was that? It must have been about 2015 maybe or 16. Um, in this satin gold or bronze, whatever you want to call it, matte black hood, five spoke wheels. It's a really cool one. Uh, I got to put this casting together again with all the vintage racing releases. It's been in car culture, what, once, twice. It's been in team transport too. Um, just a fantastic, fantastic model. There's the team's transport right there. Fast and Furious recently. It was the Von Gitten car um, in the basic range this year. It's going to be a Zamac. It's been a super treasure hunt. Maybe when the Zamac comes out, I'll, I'll put all of these models together. So let's put that one back there. And let's have a look at the pink. They don't number this one. Um, they haven't, they did it one time. I think it was actually by accident um, that the factory actually numbered these, but they don't number the pink model. There is all of the details on this one. And it looks super good in pink. Um, all the pink models, I've got them all, uh, I don't have all of them, but every convention has a pink model. And this is the latest, last one I think was a V, no, it was the, this guy right here, right, it was the Rockster, right? Now we've got the Mustang. Typically done with the Neo wheels, not all the time, but this one does have the classic Neo wheels, which they're not doing as much as they used to, but man, I just love that pink. It's kind of like the orange, it almost has like a, a certain depth to it. It looks like it's almost liquid on this car. They've really perfected the Spectre Flame. And this one looks so nice. Like the pink of these looks better than the older pink in my opinion on this car because it almost changes color depending on how you look at it. It can almost turn, turn almost orange. But such a cool choice. I like the Boss um, Deco in white. 
to go along with the, uh, with the Neo wheels. Just a huge fan of this one, and uh, it's undoubtedly, if you, if I, if you look at the, R, the previous RLC release in blue and what that's going for these days, uh, this pink one is definitely one that will, um, will be highly sought after. So if you're an RLC member, be ready for that one. I'm sure they'll announce the date soon. There you go. Those are the convention models. There's still some other stuff that I'm going to be showing on the blog or on my Instagram uh, that's coming out soon, um, including the charity of the models. There's even some giveaway models um, that I'll be covering later um, on my Instagram that uh, that they sent to me, Mark and Jennifer. But a very, very cool group of models. You guys tell me what you think about these four slash five models that were made for the Hot Wheels convention this year in 2020. Glad we could do it. Glad people are at least going to get their models. If you are interested in these, I think eBay is your option if you didn't get tickets to the convention. If you uh, want to, Atlanta in April. Hopefully, we'll see you there. Thanks, everybody. Bye.